Um, we are back in Norco because I, after I finished playing it last time, I looked and the full game is only like five to seven hours. And so I figured I can probably finish it this weekend and make two or three videos depending how it goes. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, where we left off, we found out some stuff and we were going to uh, fix up the truck, I think, is where we're going next. Yeah, so Lucky's out here, Million is fixing, out the tr fixing up the truck. I'll be finished shortly, okay. Lucky waits beside the truck. So this Miss Madera's house then. Lucky knew your knew your mama a bit. How? She was around, seeing her a time or two. She weren't no friend of the company's neither. They'd have liked to have her dead. Well, they got their wish. The old man nods. They did. These companies want to get off the oil. Too much trouble. What do you mean? They put them wind tur turbines out in the Gulf, and now they build in a brain. A uh, brain? Hell, everybody knew they in there building a brain. All the refineries is doing that, going to hook them all up. Make a bigger brain. That ain't enough to outsmart Lucky. Lucky's smarter than any big brain you can dream up. They're gonna use it to find fuel out in space. Best of luck to them. Ain't nothing wrong with trying to make a buck. Uh, then why get in their way? Lucky ain't in nobody's way. Everybody like Lucky just fine. Didn't you blow up an oil pipeline? He maintains a neutral expression as he watches the tree line. Lucky done blown up all kinds of shit. <laughs> People think Lucky hates S.H.I.E.L.D. Lucky don't hate S.H.I.E.L.D. He just like causing trouble. Without S.H.I.E.L.D. ain't nobody have a job in this place. But here come that robot. We best get moving. You want to talk more? Just tap me on the shoulder. So that added more about S.H.I.E.L.D. Shield is building a brain. Lucky says Shield is developing an artificial intelligence in order to conduct exploratory missions for off-world mineral reserves. I finished repairing the truck. Should, shall we attempt to access Shield? Yeah, I guess. I don't think we have anything else to do. What are you doing? Monkey flies from the bed of the truck as Million speeds down the highway. What? No! But monkey! Um. What do we. Hey! No sentinel drones around. Once we clear these two, we're in. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. The man nods. This me. I don't like... Do I have to do it for all of them? Damn, Lucky! Why are they all attacking me? Sure. They're all going for me directly! You guys do this! No! My hand slipped. Oh. Alright. Okay. Ouch. Nothing much to it. When them sentinels not around, they let you more or less walk into the place. Would you take a look at that big fella? The freight mover? Hell of a machine. Could really put a show with put on a show with one of them. Lucky just thinking out loud. Let's get to it, eh? Refinery's ours. Uh oh. Back with Catherine. Catherine, you made it to this warehouse with Big Bird. Yeah, I sure did. We have a job for you. It will pay. It will solve some problems before you die. Dallas. Yeah. No stranger to the network. You will assist Catherine. Yes. Catherine, in the lake, you saw the stone. Why is it red? We saw you see the stone. We want the stone, but it has evaded us. 
super what else super duck is what else a network a system of signals wireless communication of locusts and frogs cypress roots disease vectors internet of flesh biomimicry internet of internet radio towers distributed ai distributed birds in flight super duck saw you see the stone because super duck was an eagle in the sky the stone is a sky thing that many want, but it reveals itself to no one. No one except for you, Catherine. It followed you through the lake. It loves you. It seeks you. It will submit to you. But we must act fast. Shield wants the stone. Claire Bionics wants the stone. Super Duck wants the stone. And John has the stone. Who the fuck is John? John. Everyone hates John. Everyone follows John. Influencer, dopamine fiend, convinced himself he has faith in God, convinced others even, even. Some young and idealistic, some old and bitter. These are the garrets of John. You will find them gathered in the bowels of the promenade, promenade mall, promenade mall, in Kenner. John has hidden the stone in this forgotten place. He will use the stone in an attempt to fulfill his prophecies, but his are the prophecies of a fool. Got it? Go get me my shiny stone. Hurry, before you die. I want to eat it. Have a good evening, you two. That certainly didn't get weird. Dirt. Okay, bye. Can you please explain to me what... So wait. Sorry, go. You go. What was that? What was what? There's a bird with teeth the size of my head living inside that warehouse. Yep. That's normal to you? No, but I mean, I've seen some stuff in my life. Me too, but... What's the stone? He said it loves you. What was that all about? I don't know. I saw a drone or something in the lake. Why does he keep calling it a stone? Stone? Drone? I have no idea. I was a little distracted. Well, I need you to start paying attention or neither one of us is getting paid tonight. I got the gist. Some internet weirdos are living in the mall and they've got the stone. That's right. Kenner, John, and his gang. They're keeping the stone at the old promenade mall in Kenner. We need to find a way inside, get the stone, and bring it back here. You got that? Go to the abandoned mall, steal the magical stone, bring it to the giant warehouse bird. Couldn't be more clear. <laughs> Biggest node in the network is inside this building. I'm a little lost. I don't know what the hell's going on. Super duck is what? Yeah. What is it? Something like a virus, it infects things. Animals, trees, phones, whatever else. So what was that thing in the warehouse? A node in the network. There's a handful around the region. You use the app long enough, you get to know them. And the app is for doing whatever this virus wants you to do? I don't know, I just keep, just how I keep the lights on. Who is John? The thing in the, men in the warehouse mentioned a John. Kenner John. You don't know Kenner John? Never heard of him. Happy for you. He makes videos. They get shared all over the internet. I watched a couple. Religious stuff. You religious? I turned away for a while, but the cancer brought me back. No doubt. John's a divisive figure among the faithful, not the most orthodox preacher. I already know the answer to this. The thing Super Duck's looking for? Prominent- Oh, so this time I didn't read the question because it's- whatever. That's what Super said anyway. Thanks. Alright. So, I guess we gotta- Call a car. Oh, it's right there. Why can't we just walk? Whatever. I used to come here all the time as a kid. Same. I knew it fell in hard times, didn't know just how hard. I have a feeling we can't just walk in there. A drainage canal forms a moat around the parking lot, dividing it from its commercial neighbors. Oh, mattress boss. A fence adjoins the backside of two strip malls. The crevice between them reveals a smear of light toward Williams Boulevard. Beyond the fences, drive through chicken, car audio, mattress direct to you. Mattresses direct to you, water towers and power lines and crumbling concrete and traffic signs, abortive landscaping attempts, unkept, unkempt shrubs, solar-fed Christmas lights weathered and forgotten. All right. I don't think... Single car sits in the parking lot. 
subdivision at the mall's rear is beyond the lot. I don't- I think we can't go in the front. Oh my god, please. Oh. Some kind of recruitment video plays on the monitor above the entrance. Imagery flashes across the screen, punctuated by text. Three geome geometric shapes. Find all three. A name tag that reads Garrett into a crayon blue shirt. Earn the badge. A tower circled by the scaffolding. By scaffolding. Find salvation in the stars. Two teens speak in whispers behind, behind the gate. Each has a similar bowl cut, lacks shoes, and wears a blue collared shirt with a name tag that reads Garrett. The older of the two eyes Catherine indifferently. Yeah? Is the mall open? Been a long time since I've come by this mall. Is it still open? The two boys snicker. Not for you. We're trying to get inside. Oh, either of you gentlemen care to help us into this place? No one's going to help you. You have to help yourself. That's how you live your life, walking around in parking lots in the rain asking for help? More or less. It's time you take responsibility for yourself. Lift. Become strong. Get a new fit. You look like you're wearing a bag. No more soft drinks. I hate soft drinks. Then don't drink them. You need to be initiated before we can even consider letting you in. Initiated how? Humorous. How many readings have you collected? Twelve. <laughs> wow, lady, you're stupid. Twelve readings? The answer was three. You just pulled that out number out of your ass because you're old. There are three. Don't just tell her that. Only three. So you have no idea what's going on around here. Guilty. You need to pull yourself together. I can help you, but first you need to help yourself. How? Sad. Sad. Really sad. So listen, John's got a nap, okay? You need to install it if you have any hope of making your way in here. Even once you're inside, you'll need the readings to visit the cathedral. Cathedral? The place where the divine object resides. Don't talk about that with the sieves, moron. What's the app called? What app? The one you just mentioned two seconds ago to get into the mall. Oh, John Ken John's Kenner book. Or no, it's Kenner John's Apo Apocryphon. That's it, Kenner John's Apocryphon. Install that shit. Catherine pulls out her phone. Done. Congrats, you're on your way to being less of a fuck up. Okay. How do I use the app? Oh, so what do I do with this app? It's an augmented reality viewer. You gotta find John's sculptures around town. Sculptures? Virtual sculptures. You can only see them on your phone. There's three. Find the sculpture, scan it with your phone, learn some shit. The first is in Bruce's yard. Don't make it easier for her, and Bruce is a Garrett now. Show some respect. Each one will give you a clue about the next. You're just giving the whole thing away. She will not collect them all, Garrett. No need to worry. Yeah, true. The last one's a nightmare. Listen, if you need help, go talk to Fee or friend. Who? Just open the Apocryphon app while standing in the parking lot in front of the mall. You'll see friend. What's with the name tags? You work here or... No. Both tags say Garrett. Do you both have the same name? No. Yes. Look, this is some spiritual shit. We, can just, we can't just tell you about it. We did it to taunt Gooch. Dude, come on. She didn't even do the app thing yet. Some spiritual shit. Just do the app thing and then you'll know the truth or whatever. Where are your parents? I don't know. Watching Jeopardy or some shit? Got some candy for us or something? Give me a ride to a basketball practice. Glad we got this gate to protect us. Where did you say we can find friend? Friends in the parking lot. Open the app. You'll find friend. Okay. Garrett's. What do you have to say? I'm ready to retire. Garrett mentioned someone named Friend. That's right, he said to open the Apocryphon app while standing in the parking lot in front of the mall, you'll find Friend. We're supposed to get into the mall in Kenner, get to the stone and bring it back to the super duck, but the entrance is locked. Were you listening to any- <laughs> Well, see, I- I know, but like, when you had a little thing over your head. Okay, sculptures, blah blah blah. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go out to the parking lot. Look at the app. I am friend. We need your help. Carrot said to speak to you. We don't know where to find the first sculpture. The first reading of John, not far, in a yard. Carrot said to speak to you. Oh. What are you? I am friend. Okay. Cool. Yep. No, I didn't mean to do that. You've not collected this. All right.
That's Keith? Who? Keith Broussard, guy I went to high school with. Where'd you go to high school? Destrahan. Destrahan's right down the street. Not so odd you'd see him here. In an abandoned parking lot in the rain in the middle of the night? Guess I've been on this app too long. Seems fine to me. Keith? Okay, alright, sister. Thought that was you. What's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm working. Me too, working a case. Starting me a little news website. Oh, this is the guy from the bar. What's the website? Ain't got a name yet. Still trying to come up with something cool. Keith's news alert or something like that. I'm just trying to report on what's really happening around here. What are you investigating? Tell me about this case you're working on, Keith. I'm trying to get to the bottom of what's going on in this mall right here. Heard they got small boys coming in and out. Textbook adrenochrome harvesting facility. Guy who runs the operation looks about as much like a pervert as you can picture. Kenner John? You got it. Man looks like a slug. What do you know about Kenner John? I know he got to start posting in the comments section on New Orleans news and views. He'd go in there saying he learned how to speak to God. Got himself some attention that way. Before you know it, this gaggle of boys started following him around. Sick stuff. Guy's a sicko. Alright, thanks. I should keep moving, but maybe I'll come back later to see how the case is going. I'd like that, sister. Come pass by. Why don't I see you around so often these days? Staying busy. You mind me asking you something? Just a thing I find myself wondering about? Sure. Don't mean for this to be rude, but how come you treated Blue the way you did? One of the best men I ever knew. Why would you ask that? You kept his name. Figure it couldn't have been all bad. Just something I wonder. Well, wonder about something else. Hey, forget I asked. Too busy to be thinking about that right now. Then go be busy, Kate. I didn't mean to rattle you like that. A four-door, mid-sized SUV, an older model, well-maintained. I found it. Wait. Early years you spend inside, TV on. Dad blaring the game. Says he keeps Christ in his heart, but that's a lie. Kenner is the only place on earth. Nowhere to go, no one to hang out with. Your flesh is alien. The house is a prison. Only escape is through fiber lines. Someone in the forums posts a flyer for a show. Somewhere to meet people. Something to do. Whatever. You borrow your dad's car and go. Step into Saint Somewheres and you immediately know. These aren't your people, Garrett. You make a few jokes. Someone calls you a Nazi. You throw the first punch. Things spiral out of control. You're outside, bleeding, pushing someone's face into a trash can full of go cups and beer bottles. The scum are screaming at you to stop, but you don't. Someone knocks you over the head with a floor jack. You fall to the ground. They think you're dead. You're unconscious for 12 days. You wake up with a slouched mouth on your left side, determined to ruin everyone's life. You watch the forums closer now. You call the cops on the next show, and the next show, and the next show. You get the place shut down for a while. You didn't let up. Good job. Fuck the scum. Alright. Not collected this reading. Okay. So. Sun will be up by the time this is through. Where's the second sculpture? The first reading mentioned Saint Somewheres. Isn't that a bar downtown? So, but like, are, so the children are allowed to go to a bar? Can I get there without buying a car? I guess not. No, it's way far away. Okay, cool. Saint Somewheres, here we come. Dumpy dog customer. Ugh, my stomach still doesn't feel right. Oh, that guy. That hot dog finally catch up to you? This past couple hours has been the worst experience of my life. Why'd you let me eat that thing? They seemed fresh to me. Meat was a little gray, but otherwise it seemed fine. Yeah, that's what I thought too. After you left, my stomach started screaming. You know how hard it is to find a bathroom in the French Quarter? But you found one? That's good. No, I didn't find one. What did you do? You don't want to know. Oh, I'm curious. Oh, but I do. You give me bad vibes, you know that? You want to know how I dealt with the insane explosive diarrhea that I got because of you? Just some kind of power trip or something? Do you go around coaxing young men into eating old gray meat most nights, or is this a special occasion? Special occasion. And then you follow them around, see where and how they took a shit? 
This is what you do with your weeknights? Yep. I'm here, ain't I? Alright, fine, I'll tell you. Just remember that you asked, so after you leave the French Quarter, standing there with the flannel ass, enjoying my second hot dog, I can tell something's wrong in my stomach. Why would you have another one? I run up the street to use the bathroom at some tourist trap. The bouncer throws me out right when it's my turn in line. By that point, I'm desperate. I unlock my bike and start riding home as fast as I can. Nearly run over a couple of pedestrians. Monalesian Fields and St. Claude. Major intersection. Tons of traffic backed up for about a quarter of a mile because there's an accident. I know that I'm going to shit myself. It's coming. I'm in a state of complete panic. If I shit right there, dozens of people will see it. I need privacy. Fast. There's a stretch limo Hummer on the side of the road with people hanging out on the sidewalk next to it. Looks like high school students. Like maybe they're getting ready to go to a dance or something. They're all congregated on one side of the limo, like on the sidewalk. I'm in the street on the opposite side. So I just drop my bike there in the street and sneak into the limo as quietly as I can. No one's in there. They're all outside. I don't think twice. I just pulled my pants down and let loose. It's, you know, there's a lot of it. It's taking a while. Should I keep going? You still enjoying yourself here? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me more. Please continue. <laughs> You're disgusting. So anyway, while I'm in there, the kids shut the door. The driver climbs in and the lights at the rear of the limo go out. I guess the driver was just dropping the kids off downtown. I don't know. But at this point, it's just me and him. There's a tinted window that divides the cab from the rear of the limo. It'd be pretty hard for the driver to see me with the lights out. He gets on the phone, calls his wife or girlfriend or whatever as he drives away. He thinks the limo's empty. He's got it on speakerphone and I can hear the whole conversation in the speaker right next to my head. First thing he says is how bad those kids stink. He said he'll never drive young kids like that again. He said they smell like baby diapers. Then he starts, like, having phone sex. I'm not joking. They immediately launch into it, saying what they want to do to each other, all this stuff. Not like that's the biggest deal in the world, but for reasons I won't get into, I just didn't really didn't want to be in there anymore. I try to open the door, thinking, fuck it, I'll just jump out, but the door is locked. I check the others. They're all locked. I crawl up to the window and start tapping on it. Sir, sir, you forgot me. He hangs up the phone, cracks a little tinted window. Who in the hell are you? He asks. I'm one of the, the kids. You forgot to drop me off. He starts shouting. What is that smell? What is that smell? My heart is beating out of my throat. I can't breathe. He rolls up the window, calls the police. Again, I can hear the entire conversation. Operator asks him what the problem is. He says a man broke into his limo and took a shit in it. Just like that. A man broke into my limo and took a shit in it. They ask him his location. He pulls off on the side of the road and waits for the cops. I'm banging on the window, begging him to let me out, saying I'll pay for him to get it cleaned up. He pretends I'm not even there. Still care to listen? Yeah, I'm invested in this story. All right, so here's what gets me. The New Orleans Police Department has never showed up to anything on time. It takes them hours to show up to a murder scene, right? Well, a squad car pulls up behind the limo within like three minutes. At this point, I am, I can't even explain to you, I'm having a heart attack. I'm dying. I crouch down behind the door and wait. There's shit everywhere. It's on my shoes, my hands, my shirt. I have no alibi here. The man gets out, opens the door for the police. I spring out of there and just start running. I don't look back. I can hear the cops shouting. I turn into the neighborhood. There's a construction dumpster about a block away. I run like lightning toward that thing, dive in. There's barbed wire, nails, all kinds of stuff. I'm getting scratched up. I don't care. Adrenaline is coursing down, coursing through my veins. I burrow down into the heap of trash like a mole and, and hide. I can hear the police sirens. Squad car stops at the dumpster. They get out, look around. They shine the light right on me. I stay perfectly still, holding my breath. They leave. I wait a couple minutes. I climb out. I walk here. I take another shit. Um, so, you mean... <laughs> You still have the shit on your clothes and stuff while we're standing here? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, hot dogs. So true, pal. <laughs> A small group gossips conspiratorially. The music spilling from inside drowns out all but the vaguest details. A love triangle, too much whiskey, someone kicked in the wall in a fit of rage. Bouncer? man working the door tunes out the cacophony while scrolling through cooking recipes on his phone. Interesting that we can see that from here. No cover tonight, just checking IDs. We're looking... Oh. What's happening tonight? It's bounce night. Bounce night? Yeah. Crowd seems... Catherine glances around and then to Dallas. Different than I'd expect. What are you, what are you looking at me for? Just don't you agree? What, bunch of white kids shaking their ass to bounce so I'm supposed to give a shit? I don't mean, didn't mean anything by it. All I listen to is Christmas music. Ew. Christmas music. That's it. That's the only thing I listen to. Seriously? I don't even start. Over here having bounce night for a bunch of white kids. So now it's a problem all of a sudden because all you listen to is Christmas music? 
Yeah, now it's a problem. That's right. Where are you from, Stinky? Minneapolis. Enough said. Christmas music. Just kind of creepy. That's all you listen to. Creepy? I'm gonna listen to you about what's creepy? Whoa, 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 boys. Christmas music is cozy. Helps me relax. False. That's cool, man. That's fine. God damn. I, before we go in, or before we do anything else, I'm just gonna look here. It must be inside. Okay. I don't think he's gonna know. We're looking for another one of those sculptures. I doubt it'd be in there. What do you mean? They said around here. Does he know? Is that what we're saying here? Looking for a sculpture. One of Kenner John's sculptures that ring a bell. Talking about the douche whose little gang keeps calling the cops on me? Presumably, yes. You don't look like one of those mall Nazis. What's this about? I'm the mother of a Garrett. My son recently got into this stuff. I'm concerned. My condolences. I'm a father myself. Would hate to see my kid wrapped up in this kind of thing. Anyhow, here's what I know. They've got some game they play on their phone. They stick these devices around town like Easter eggs. They find the devices, scan them with their phone, something like that. Not sure of the details. They hid one right outside the bar, so we had the little mall Nazis come in and buy every night to find it. But then last night, Ditchman came and grabbed it. Ditchman? Who's Ditchman? He lives over by the mall. He's usually hanging around the ditches, feeding the ducks. I don't know the guy, but Bell vouches for him, so he must be alright. Sounds like we're heading back to the mall. Why does John's gang call the cops on you? I don't know. They try to get every show I book shut down. Maybe because they have nothing better to do? Why does Ditchman come around here? This Ditchman lives all the way out in Kenner. What's he coming around here for? He buys stuff up off Bell. What kind of stuff? The man glances down at Catherine's shoes. Why do you care? Just looking for a way into the mall. I'll say this, Ditchman gets stuff from here. He takes it to the mall. I think he's selling it to those little Nazis. Alright. So we can't go in there, and now we have to get a car again. That's annoying. Spending all of my... duck coin. <laughs> have we gone downtown? I think that's where... the... brain scan place was. Okay, so... I... Th Maybe down here? Ah, oh, a small plastic device lies on the bank in the drainage canal. Was it there before and I just didn't see it, or was it not there? Second reading from the Apocryphon of J Kenner John. Leave the hospital and discover faith, that immaterial essence. Pray, Garrett. Pray in the closet during the football games. Post prayers to the show forums just to fuck with the scum. That's how the Garretts find you. One's named Garrett, so they're all named Garrett. Some kind of joke, doesn't matter. You're Garrett too. 27 Garretts at all. So the first number that was lit up was 12 and now 27. Garrett worked in the basement below the council chambers, said they had a closet full of old computers. Garrett plugged one in, used it as a server. That's how Garrett hosted the sermons in the sky. He projected videos of a guy he found online. Said he grew up in Kenner just like Garrett. Garrett began watching him too and told the other Garretts to subscribe. Like and subscribe! <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. Soon, all the Garretts were watching Kenner John. John summoned his flock to the ziggurat of Promenade Mall and taught them all about- and taught them about Christ's hidden nature and other secrets of faith. He spoke of- He spoke of these things on the server behind the beneath the council chambers, as he did above the concrete in the New Orleans sky. What are you doing? Well, oh, Papa, what do you think about Johnny? Don't you just hate him? A real fuck, isn't he? Can I help you? Catherine, dear, it is I who will be helping you on this night. I knew you'd come see me, waiting in the ditches. Waiting? No trouble there, child. Happy to do it. You need access to them all. Here I am, delighted to assist. The man eyes the ring hanging from Catherine's neck. And you even wear the stone of the Magdalene, just as she herself wore it. You are the image of her beauty. You, why are you here? We were neighbors once upon a time, don't you remember? I've only come to help, as neighbors do. Catherine shakes her head. What is this? It is my responsibility to guide you, and to watch over the children. I've been to CK, she is well. Excuse me? Can you tell me what this is about? It's about a boat, a boat that can get you into the mall. The Garretts, they favor me over John, that little shrimp. That little sad boy. 
I'll be your guide into the mall, the sanctum of the Garrets. I... Catherine turns to Dallas. This man, I think he's been following me. To help you. To help. I've always watched over you. But Blue. A good man, they say. An asshole. He wouldn't let your papa near you. Well, here I am. I came to tell you. You needn't worry about Kay. Keep her name out of your mouth. Because she'll be home, perhaps too late for you. Dying, they say, from becoming to being, the philosophers say. Where did you see my daughter? Walking through California like it were Galilee, her robes frayed, splendid, divine, a child of Christ. No, not getting in a ditch with this guy, fuck no. There's no one else in this place to help you. Do you see anyone else? Anyone who will help? I don't want your help. I don't want to be anywhere near you. Stay away from me and my family. Are we clear? I have all the time in the world, Catherine. But you, dear, you do not. I am not here to frighten you, to harm you. Quite the opposite. Without my help, there will be no getting into the small. Patience is a virtue of your papa. I am your only way in. Dallas leads Catherine from the canal. Let's go find this last sculpture. We don't need his help. I know him. The old man smiles and gives an enthusiastic wave as Dallas glances back towards the ditch. Sounds like a stalker. I just don't know. Seems like this parking lot is full of strange men who know your name. Am I missing something here? What, you think I invited them? I don't know, maybe. I'm just as confused as you are. Okay, so... Where's the last place, though? It's gotta be downtown, right? I don't know if that's true, but we've been everywhere else. That unmarked building over there, I heard, hear a lot of bad things about it. Had a friend a while back go to a clinic in there to get his head scanned. Said they sent him home with the wrong drive. Oof. He powered it on. The voice on the other end started yelling and screaming at him. Said it wanted to kill him. How do you feel about Papa? Probably about how you'd expect. Like, he's batshit. Where's he pulling all that nonsense from? I don't know. I seem to attract these people. I thought he might be the type. This is conjecture, but my father, love him, he wasn't the most honest man to come out of Crevasse, Louisiana. He used to spin up all kinds of tales about our family's history. Had more than a few souls believing him. Figure this guy's part of old man Pete's living legacy. Dallas laughs. Alright. So all that stuff about the necklace? Not even getting into it. Hey, I get it. Okay, maybe I'm not in the right place. The, yeah. Oh. Oh, City Hall, yeah. A woman with an exhausted expression sits on a bucket with her forgotten cigarette burning in her fingers. Are you one of the nerds that come around here to play with puppets? Uh, I'm not. No, not my scene. Good, we're back here trying to live a quiet life. These people with their haircuts. They come around here playing with puppets, making a big production, then the cops show up and give us a hard time. I got chased away from my last spot. I'm not trying to deal with that again. Where's your last spot? The mall in Kenner. I was one of the first after they condemned the building. A man lived in the closet. He was strange, but he kept to himself. No one bothered me in that place until the boys showed up. They chased us out, threatened to report us. Little bastards. That guy John, their leader, he should die. I hope the closet man lives up to his word and kills him. Okay, so we need to go to City Hall. But how do we- oh. The figure sits at a desk overlooking Duncan Plaza and the deepening winter night. He watches the fingers of a cool front animate the tops of oak trees in the park. He watches the last remnants of commuter traffic leaving Canal Street. The pulsing taillights, the shift workers running towards the bus. Okay. Good for him. I think- I don't think this will work. Hi, friend. We need your help. Garrett said to speak to you. I don't understand the readings. Discovering the third reading of John is the most challenging. I could not help Gooch from the second reading of John. John spoke of these things on the server beneath the council chambers as he did above the concrete in the New Orleans sky. Basement, sky. Council chambers are on the first floor of City Hall, so we're in the right place. Basement beneath City Hall. Sky above City Hall. Yes. Okay. but we can't get in. The guard greets Catherine at the door. Welcome to New Orleans City Hall. No council sessions this evening. Building's closed. The Garrett sent us? 
The guard looks Dallas up and down. Nah. We're here because of Ken or John. I've let a lot of people pass through in the evenings when I take pictures from the roof or whatever the hell. None of them look like you two, following my gut here. The city know about this? So the city just lets these garrets come in and out after hours? I do what I'm told. You looking for a reason? Go somewhere else. We're serious. We're training to become garrets. Why? To earn Ken or John's favor. We want Ken or John to notice us. You ever watched any of that man's videos? Guy's lost a few marbles along the way. It makes sense to me. The guard shakes his head. This whole city lost its mind. Listen, there's some funny stuff that happens in this building at night. Thinking you can just walk up to the roof, it's not like that. And be careful getting around. One of the generators went dead. The elevator is out, and so are the sta stairwell lights. Catherine enters the building. Ahead is an elevator corridor with a, with a stairwell. A long, unmarked hallway extends to her left. The exit is in her back. Catherine turns the corner and immediately meets the stare of a man squatted on the ground in the stuttering light of the hallway. Oh, hey. Sup? I wouldn't stick around too long. Why? What's that supposed to mean? The man's demeanor remains unchanged. He removes a receipt from his shirt pocket with a note scribbled on the back. He begins to read. On the seventh floor is a planner, but if you don't listen closely to the following, he'll hide. In the darkness are hands you must shake. Do so in the order I say. Any missteps on the elevator will clear the mistake. The first number in our sequence is the floor above the council chambers, so two. The third most distant from the sky. There are eleven floor there are eleven floors should one count the basement. Our second number is what makes an even divide. And the third is just above it, fifth from the sky. He hands the receipt to Catherine. You need help. Friend is outside the building. Open the app and he'll be there. Good luck. What? Where, where are you going with this? I'm lost. Like I said, I can't help you. If you need help, then go outside, open the app, and talk to friend. Catherine returns to the basement's elevator corridor. Go upstairs. Floor display above the elevator's being soft before illuminating again. Doesn't sound like an elevator's coming. The guard said the generator that oh, okay. Stairwell. Go up. Go up. Oh. Someone is in here. Dallas speaks to the darkness. Hello? Stairwell is silent, but for the decaying echo of his voice. Okay. Sky. Let's go all the way up. That's not what I meant to do. I want to say it's like seven, five, six. Catherine enters an unlit office. She tries the light, no power. A window looks beyond Duncan Plaza toward the French Quarter. Okay, so maybe not. Counting the, the sky. So eight, five, six? Down. In an earlier round. Let's try this. That's three handshakes and nothing happened. I think we got it wrong. What's it say on the receipt? Hit the elevator button and let's try again. Guy in the basement said friend is outside if we need help. Okay, so where was... Okay. I'm gonna go back to my original idea. I don't... Third from the sky is what's confusing me, but I think the council chamber is on the first floor. So... 
we go up. And then I still think it's five, six. Begins to pull Catherine slowly toward the floor. She grabs Dallas, attempting to resist. Catherine? It's... The hand, the hand jerks her violently to the floor. Dallas attempts to intercept the figure in the dark, but only meets the wall. Hey! He slaps the wall. <laughs> Tell me who the fuck is there. His echo trails off into the extremities of the stairwell. As Catherine looks up from the ground, a light switches on high above them. Dallas, help me up, please. Dallas recovers Catherine from the floor, and she hangs her arm over his shoulder. You're not in any kind of condition to be doing this shit. I know it. I see a light. She gestures weakly. Up there. I'll carry you. No, it's fine. Let's just go find this planner. Get to the roof. Whatever it takes to be done here. Oh, it's on now. Catherine steps, steps into the warm lamplight glow of the seventh floor office overlooking Duncan Plaza. A man sits at a desk facing the window. He looks back at Catherine, looks away. Office is closed. Working late? The planner looks at Catherine over his slouched shoulder. No later than usual. Keep listening. I don't mean to intrude. The planner nods and says nothing. I'm trying to get to the roof. Planner turns in his chair. I see. Any chance you could help? You don't look like the other ones, I'll say that. Excuse me? Where's your shirt? The planner dismisses Catherine with a hand wave and points toward a coat rack near the door. This is killing me. An exit sign casts an obscure red glow over the area. Ahead is a steel door with panic bars. Mounted to the wall beside it is a magnetic card reader. This must lead to the roof. Catherine scans the ID badge and pushes open the door. Catherine steps through the door into the cool winter air above City Hall. I need to sit for a moment. Of course. Dallas gestures to a nearby air conditioning unit. Let's sit. Pretty stars. Getting too old for this. Running around like this on my 49th birthday, what a life. Birthday? Today's your birthday? Today's my birthday. At least it's memorable. No question there. You alright? I'm fine, just needed to breathe for a minute. That was strange. Can never be normal with super, always gotta be some shit like that. So why keep doing it? I don't know. Dallas lifts his hand in resignation. There's not much else really, not anymore. What would you rather be doing? If you could. What I'd like to do is be home with my daughter and my grandchild. Where's home? Holly Grove, right near the canal. They started staying with me a few months back. They liven up the place. Kids do that. You got any? A son and a daughter, two years apart. Still at home? My younger one, I can't get him out the house. My daughter, she doesn't want anything to do with me. Thought maybe when I was diagnosed she'd come around, but she never did. Catherine looks toward the westbound traffic. No, she never did. Hurts to be dropped like that. Sometimes it hurts worse the more time passes. I just know I won't see her before I die, and that, it does, it does hurt. It hurts, and then you die. The two of them laugh. It's not all bad, just hope there's something on the other side. There is, I know there is. The ones I hurt and left behind, I'll see them there. I'll get to apologize. Amen. Let me ask you the same question you asked me. Why keep doing this? Not a lot of runners our age. Long story, this is my first time on the app, but things have been interesting for a while now. I tried to have a straight job once upon a time, but that didn't last too long. Yeah, why not? Let's just say I lied on my resume. Nearly everyone you meet has a story like that in this line of work. Nothing special about me, then. I wouldn't say that. The old man in the ditch thinks you're special. Let him think it. So, you figure this last sculpture is around here somewhere? 
said something about it being in the sky. How do I go up with it? I have to like, I have to literally do this. Okay. That's fine. There's she. Third reading from the Apocrypha of Kenner John. New Orleans is a pit and Garrett's stuck in it. New Orleans is the lowest world. A messenger visits John, tells him about the early faithful now living in the cavities of the Martian moons. Tells him there's a way to commune with them through the Ad Adamic le language of angels and spellcasters and others who know God's mind. There's a chrism, a fluid that John, John must imbibe. It's in an egg that floats in the sky. John is blessed with a plan to escape the low world's reach. The Garrets must build a spacefaring ark, a vessel with which to leave this earth. Having imbibed the chrism, John may ascend beyond the distortion of the low world and listen for the twilight language. Two Garrets work together at Stennis. John appoints them to oversee the task. They soon find other engineers sympathetic to their plan. The Garrett's labor for 505 days. Okay, so we've got 1227, 505. And in that time, the arc is complete. All that remains is the egg, which holds the prism to God to know God's mind. So th is that it? We found all three. Let's go ask the kids at the mall. Is there anything else to look at up here? No, oh. Silly Jimmy's Superdome. They changed it again? What was it before? Pearl Dish Soap Superdome? Handsome Burger Superdome? I don't know, I lost track. It's fair. It's like the uh, Star Lake Amphitheater. Distant traffic glides across the Mississippi River along the Crescent City Connection. Okay, let's go back to the mall. Anything else on the overpass? No. Anything else in the French Quarter? Santa's still in. What happened to what's his face? I'm kind of curious what happens if I go somewhere else. Is this your house, man? Car flooded last summer when the pumping station went down, ruined the transmission. City said they'd send me a check, still waiting on it. Been borrowing my daughter's car in the meantime. Love this house. It was my daddy's, but I'll be damned if it isn't cursed. Every time I get a little money in the bank, the place floods again. Why you got the TV muted, buddy? Mom's studying. See? Marfa grins wide. Kid of the year. It's the birthday boy. How is it over here, kiddo? Fine, homework, Austin's sick. You sick, Austin? Yes, sir. Why all this sir? His dad makes him say that now. What's he know about manners? So it's bad then that he wants to teach my child respect? Tell us waves away the calm. Comment. I'm not sir, all right, Austin? I'm your pops. Yes, sir. <laughs> Knew you were going to say that. We got you a little something for your birthday. It's under the tree. Oh, come on. I told you. It's small. Trust me. Well, let me go see what it is. Look at my grandchild always playing games. I don't mind long as he keeps the grades up. Y'all save me any pizza? Austin tore through two boxes and he's still hungry. I'll pick something up when I knock off. It'll be morning by then. I'll bring bagels. Man, I'd love some bagels. Would you look at this? A new tie. A little early for a tree, isn't it? Never too early for Christmas. I love Christmas. Yeah, we're getting that idea. What else we got? Nothing? Okay. Well, that was a fun detour. Alright, let's call a cab. Or a car. Whatever. Where are we going? Back to the mall. Oh. 
Catherine, we will send an advance to your wallet in order for you to complete the mission, but please do not waste our time. What do you mean? Should I check on what's his face? Anything? Keith made me a little upset earlier. You're still cooling off. Oh, okay. Might be. Where'd they go? Those two little shits. Where'd they go? Hell. Why do we just waste our time? We have to get in there. Only one option comes to mind. The creep in the ditch? Afraid so. This night? I hate it. We... We need your boat. Oh! His face is pure glee. How wonderful! A boat ride into John's fucking skull. We'll live inside it. Calm down. Keep your distance. Lower your voice. We need the boat, not you. The mall, the mall. John Skull, John Skull. The boat is just a little further down the canal. Let us go and visit the sanctum of the Garrets. Oh. Anything else to see? A decommissioned freight mover is suspended above the refinery. Guess we go in. Map of Shield Security Zone A is displayed on the monitor. Wait, can I not? Okay. Instruction manual for the operation of Shield's railroad crane network. You read from the manual. Shield's railro railroad cranes can be operated from a safe distance using control panels located at various points around the facility. Each crane is labeled with a unique identification number. To operate a crane, enter the prefix code 2914, followed by the crane ID. A command line terminal sits open on the computer's desktop. Security status. Authenticated. Someone has forgotten to log out. Fortunate for us. Freight elevator lock engaged. Drone bay lock engaged. To command. Disengage lock. Leave. Nice. A wanted poster hangs on the wall. Wanted, drone fleet captain Sun A-19, commonly known as the drone priest, is missing and considered armed and dangerous. Contact shield community dispatch if sighted. Do not approach. Anything else? The right security monitor displays a freight moving robot hanging limp from a crane. The center security monitor displays the Good Hope Cemetery, raised tomb surrounded on all sides by refinery architecture. The left security monitor displays a freight elevator. Okay, anything else? No? Now that we are in, take a look at what Lucky got. The man crouches down, opens his backpack, and reveals two grenades. Got these from a guy at the burger place. Lucky done played with bigger grenades than this. These more like little toys. Loud as it is around here, they ain't likely to make much of a ruckus. If we get into any more scuffles, they might be handy, but we best be choosy. Only got us the two. He zips his backpack, tips his hat, and smiles. There'll be no use against the St. Clair models that guard the Good Hope Plantation. Well, sure, them guards not your average type. We'll need to find some other way to get rid of them. What do you suggest? Like I say, there's that big bastard hanging from the railroad crane over there. Freight mover. Robot, just like you. Might be your Padna. Let's go talk with it. A mover has no agency. How you know? Thought you weren't- wasn't a St. Clair. You come up with something better lucky all years. Till then, he'll go with his gut. Lucky Gun Dunn got all got help from all kinds of robots. Workers? Two men watch the monitor display above the freight elevator. So what is this? They making us go up to sp go to space now? Imagine the overtime you'd get, not to mention the hazard pay. Shit, wish I could be like one of them, the old timers and retire on workman's comp. Careful what you wish for. You know them old guys just played up for the news. They bump their heads, tie in their shoe, and get paid vacation. Give me a break. You knew any of the ones that died in the blast? Yeah, I knew a couple. Blue, Wiki, good guys. Wiki weren't on the plant two weeks. This work, no joke. Somebody gotta do it. People wanna drive around, eat their microwave dinners, all that shit. That don't come free. Somebody gotta make it. Just hope it ain't us next time. Keep your eyes and ears open. The ones that get hurt ain't paying attention. Hmm.
wires drift in the wind above the catwalk. Your eyes follow them upwards to a large freight mover hanging from a railroad crane. You shout towards the machine to get its attention. It remains unresponsive. Okay, Million enters, emits a high frequency whine. Silence follows. A voice swells from the sky as the mover begins to speak. You will dive into the water and the depths will become the surface. The breeze will change the shape of the flame and the flame will be as boundless as the territory that it lights. Hey buddy, keep it down. It ain't time to make a ruckus yet. You will find in the water not only flames but whole hurricanes. There will be patterns of light that form the shape of the old bayous where those who killed for freedom still hide. It's like a poem or something? Rattling cages on the tracks and whispering at the pond. Perhaps the pond will whisper back. That ground, that soil, those bloody days. The lights of the lanterns became this very flame. Be straight with me, you gonna help us out or not? You will find the old pool boat where the ghosts still hide their eyes. There are mall eyes and ditch eyes and bayou eyes. There are eagle eyes and duck eyes and cardinal eyes. There are John's eyes and there are your eyes and your eyes are the refinery eyes. Guess I was wrong to think that this thing would be any help. What's that number on its chest? 016. Remember that, all right? That's the identification number for the crane it's hanging on. That's how they do it around here. Let's go find the controls. Drop this goofy bastard right on the guards. Wouldn't that be a hoot? Sure. The montage unfolds. Laptop, satellite, stock voice. Shields. Shield's commitment to st sustainability is built into our business model and code of conduct. To protect our planet's ecosystem, Shield leverages inf informatics and machine learning to harness extra planetary resources, such as magnified solar energy and astral ore. Our priority is the safety of our workers and the integrity of wetlands and other natural habitats, ac habitats across the planet. Shield, a greener world awaits. Yeah, you think so? Aha. Use keypad. I already forgot. I think it's two nine one four zero one six. Manual override confirmed. Startup sequence initiated. Please enter a movement path code. A what now? What? Movement path accepted. Hold up. Where's that thing going? I believe that's determined by the movement code you just entered. I punched in whatever came to mind, but this ain't the direction I'd hoped. It seems to be slowing down. Surely it'll stop before it reaches the flame. <laughs> they wouldn't have a code that sends the damn thing straight into a gas flare. Well, they probably wouldn't, but I just typed in all of the numbers we learned so far. Oh, dear lord Jesus Christ. Oh my. That thing rambled a bit, but I wasn't trying to kill it. You set out to cause a distraction. This most certainly qualifies. Guess that's what happens when you t talk your poetry to old Lucky. Let's hope the explosion drew a fi few guards away from headquarters. If this don't do it, then nothing will. Wait, y'all hear something? Right. Uh, hello? Can anybody tell me if this thing's hostile? They can't decommission me. Oh, it's that guy. They'll never decommission the drone priest, baby. The drone priest is going to kill you. Gone, gone, forever! Wait, this whole refinery a damn clown show. Come, my little ones, let's dance. I didn't want to kill you, like, you know, it's fine. Do we throw a grenade? No! Okay. What's the difference? Oh. Cool, cool. There. Oh, come on. Oh, it worked anyway. Okay. Why don't you just calm down? So, that was fun. I guess we can't do anything here. Because I fucked up. Alert. Oh. Look, no guards. Guess Lucky was right. Uh, hello? <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> Such splendid attire. You have chosen vagabonds of the highway as your guys, fitting finery for this pageant of the epiphany and the ashes. Beyond these doors, the masquerade of the refinery flame. In each likeness, a shadow in opposition is cast. That which is low shall rise. The swamps become mountains, the earth a ceiling of the sky. The path is straight for the wayward. The thieves are gift givers, and the flame is the provenance of the mind. I didn't know what to expect, but sure as hell weren't this. Don't attract attention. Let's move along. Keith smokes a cigarette while watching the pageant. You made it after all. Lots to take in, eh? What'd you get through? What even is this? A party the shield execs throw a few weeks before Mardi Gras. Been doing it every year for decades. Been thinking about what to call my website since I left the bar. Finally settled on a name. You ready? Keith's Corner. How you like it? The executives, the landlords, the so-called philanthropists, they'll all- they'll be cornered in Keith's Corner. Want the website to look like a boxing ring. Want the logo to have a boxing gloves in it. Might even do some live streams. Pretty cool idea. Keith's got him quartered. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. Oh. There are many currents of deceit and mistrust cursing, coursing through the room tonight. Some wear masks to speak truthfully without fear of reprisal. Others wear masks to further deceive. Laura St. Clair, the regional CEO, is unwell. That's why she doesn't join us tonight. She was once the darling of the pageant, but no more. Her power is slipping. She's at odds with her father on one side and the board on the other. Why do people just offer up this information? <laughs> uh, why is she at odds with her father? They seek the same thing, but for different reasons. There is a technology of unknown origins that has made this region its home. Laura believes that it holds the key to powering a, mini a mining fleet that can travel great distances for the purpose of gathering ore. It is her final bid to move S.H.I.E.L.D. away from Earth extraction. Her father, Thomas St. Clair, hopes to block his daughter's discovery of this elusive technology and to intercept it for his own designs. He is a man without a face. You will never see Thomas St. Clair, but his eyes are everywhere that he wishes them to be. They are here tonight, behind several of these masks, perhaps closer than you realize. Why is Laura at odds with the board? She has pursued a mystical, invisible device against every wish of the board inflating the operations budget in order to siphon money toward her zealous mission. She believes that if she can secure this technology, the board will forgive her for her many transgressions. I am in a position to know that she is mistaken. It's too late for her. A coup is already underway. It has only taken this long because they hoped her spiraling madness would drive her to suicide. They fear the wrath of her father, with whom S.H.I.E.L.D. holds many profitable contracts. But Laura's self-destruction may prove too costly in the end. What is the, what's the technology? A vessel of light that has remained hidden in the lake for decades. A visitor from a different distant star. A hoax, an angel, a military weapon, a drone. Distortion created by glasses combusting in the swamp. No one has been able to capture the specimen or even verify its existence. Laura becomes more irate with each proposed theory. She grows darker by the day, and the device escapes her reach at every turn. You came to the one last year? When they lit the Nutria on fire? Yeah, they say Thomas St. Clair shows up every year. He might be here tonight. There's just no way to know with all the costumes. Is that why his daughter didn't show? She's probably up there in her office drinking alone. There's too much bad energy here. Saw online there's a party in the lake tonight. Might bail early to check it out. The vibes are off, man. The vibes are off. An improvised dance performance plays across the stage. The dancers periodically pause in their motion and eye the crowd with an exaggerated look of distrust. One is dressed in a maroon robe, the other in a feathered cape. You make your way towards the stage. What's everybody else doing? You begin to mirror the unnatural contortions of the performers as they crab walk across the stage. Other spectators dodge you or give a start as you graze the back of their legs. The onstage performers notice your mimicry. They stop their movement with a severe look of disapproval. You stop as well and meet their expression. One of the performers raises his hand to you. The shadow! You raise your hand in kind. The tryhard! The performer gives you the middle finger and turns away. Oh, I should have said dad. Dad would have been funny. Dad? Brady would have been proud something in the lake. 
Your mom saw something in the lake. Laura St. Clair wants it. I want to find the entity. Shield is pivoting towards off-world mineral extraction, and Laura believed it holds the key to advanced space travel. She hoped that if she captured the specimen and offered it to Shield's regional board of directors, they would forgive her for her, for her many transgressions. Thomas St. Clair wants it. He's in a race with his daughter to find the specimen. You don't know his intentions. A vessel of light that has remained hidden in the lake for decades, or a visitor from a distant star, or a hoax, or an angel, or a military weapon, or a drone, or a distortion created by the gases combusting in the swamp, or something else. Laura St. Clair is searching. She's searching for an elusive technology. You believe it's the same entity that your mom, that your mom witnessed in the lake before her death. Thomas St. Clair is searching for something. In competition with his daughter, he searches for an elusive technology. Yep. A man wearing a golden crown gesticulates drunkenly while those around him back away in embarrassment or attempt to calm him. <laughs> History isn't created by the, the sympathetic, the soft-hearted. No. Why uh, bend to the will of the weak, huh? Huh? Jesus Christ, dude. Why punish those who carry passion and virtue in their hearts? Power is the very essence of life. Power, not compassion or goodwill or any stuff like that. That's great, Bruce. Garrett, I'm a Garrett now. How many times do I have to say it? I am not calling you by your cult name. It's not a cult. Definitely is. It's a place for visionaries to thrive and tonight we'll leave this world. Yeah, I saw Kenner John bragging about that online. Godspeed. That's why rocket's going to explode before it leaves the ground. The engineering is sound, I'm helping to launch it. You're blitzed, you couldn't even walk a straight line. Keep it up, you can only hide your jealousy for so long. You think I'm jealous that you joined a cult? Not that, you know what I'm talking about. The CEO chose me as assistant director. You wanted it, you wanted it so bad. But still, I possess the confidence to leave it behind, to take a leap of faith. Bruce, we all know you've got daddy issues. Why don't you go hug your little stuffed monkey and cry about it? Weak-minded reject, you're too pathetic to understand. Excuse me? You're only humiliating yourself. What did that add? Garrett. What's a Garrett? <laughs> we know. The sun and the minotaur watch crowds flood in and flow in and out of the lobby. Can I go upstairs? Elevator, yeah. I think I haven't looked at yet. No. This elevator is protected by retinal authentication. The executive offices are above. It's likely where your mother's possessions are being held. Uh. Tonight we search the stars for God's signal. All right, man. That's enough of your nonsense for one night, Bruce. You're drunk. Let's go find somewhere to lay you down. Well, that was awful. Ever since he became Laura St. Clair's assistant, he's been like this. Callous, arrogant, rude. Now he's gotten into this crap at the mall. I've had enough. I blame his dad. He's always been so cold to Bruce, feeding his insecurities. Like father, like son. If that man had said just one nice thing to him, I bet he wouldn't be trying to launch himself into space. He's drying out by the elevator. Let's see if he apologizes when he comes to. Thanks, flower crown lady. This was the individual causing a scene in the ballroom. They're all so damn jealous, aren't they? They all want my position. Petty bastards. They want what I have. A view from the inside. A view of the... The river, the lights, well, screw them, screw them, screw them, S-C-R-E-W-T-H-E-M, screw the, the drunken king falls into a gibbering sleep. Grab him. Clever, if he's an assistant to Laura St. Clair, then he would have access to the executive suite. Grab his arms. <laughs> you put the drunken king's arm over your shoulder and hoist him up. You drag the slouching king towards the retinal scanner. Mmm, fucking what? LED scanner sensor passes over his eye before you drop him to the ground. Bye, Bruce. Have a good nap. Forgot about the dog, I'm gonna be honest. I know that's very unlike me. Anything to see other than the... Wait, no. Hey girl, hey! 
The text of the console display lists a sequence of locations, each entry timestamps. It is, you infer, a description of your movement through the premises. Oh. So you knew I was coming, huh? Storage box sits on the shelf. Must be mine. Binders containing various internal literature, operational documentation, engineering reports, soil quality surveys, human resource handbooks. A binder no different in appearance from the rest sits among the collection on the viability of operating a server supercluster at the Shield Norco refining facility. While the Mississippi River provides a natural cooling source, the Norco location is determined to be too precarious for a full supercluster buildout. Hurricanes, coastal erosion, unreliable state management, and the location's proximity to nuclear facilities could result in cascading disaster events that would jeopardize critical network infrastructure. It would better serve as a support node for the proposed Gulf Coast Astral Eyes GCAE distributed regional system. So, nothing. Oh. Do not rifle through my things. All right. The regional shield CEO stares out the ex at the expanse of refinery beyond the office window. I felt you here before I even saw you on the monitor. You were silent, just like Catherine. I'd look out over the town and imagine where she might be. Never anywhere, just silent. Things have been feeling vague, haven't they? Those highways you're always on, you don't sleep, you don't feel. Not anything. Vague. Nothing. Nowhere. I don't sleep either. When I sit up in bed and open my eyes, I see things on the wall. They pantomime, they beg, but I don't turn away. There was a time when I would, but I've lost the energy. Now, I watch. I'm not here tonight for the party. I've kept my distance from the others. If they vote me out, it will upset my father, so they'd rather I resign or die. I stay here. Right here. I can see the river here, and the flame. I thought it would be me that the light would come to see. Of course it was Catherine. But the flame is still mine. Still burns for me. I've done so much that is wrong. Held out so long just to stay near it but I've lost my hold. The vagueness, the shadows, the board has had it. The box on the shelf, it's what you came for, so take it. By all rights, it's yours. I thought I found what I needed, but it was a mistake. Catherine was smarter than me, or more stubborn. I don't want the others to have it after I'm gone. Not my father, not the board. I wanted to experience the light, wanted to touch it, but I can't stand around it any longer. That's all, go find your brother. Do you want to tell me where my brother is? Please take the box and leave. I have other matters to attend to. All right. You find within the box miscellaneous artifacts from your mom's life, medical bills from Oshner Hospital, books on a range of environmental topics, a dimes discount rewards card, and other eph ephemera. The coupon card for dimes discount. Okay. Oh, and Kay? Don't trust her. I'm telling you, it's Million. Million is a spy. 